This is CES Tech Talk. I'm James Kotecki, bringing you one of my favorite C-Space studio interviews from CES 2024. I had a lot of great conversations in Las Vegas, and I know you're going to like this one, so enjoy. Welcome back to the C-Space studio here at CES 2024. I am James Kotecki, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Han Wen, Chief Digital and Marketing Officer at L'Oreal. Thanks for coming to the C-Space studio. Thank you, James. Happy to be here. L'Oreal is a big presence at CES this year. You, as we mentioned before we started rolling, you've been coming to CES for 10 years. So a lot of people here at CES probably know a little bit about you, but how do you define, especially as the marketing officer, how do you define the brand overall? Well, L'Oreal, we are very fortunate to actually have a large portfolio of brands. Um, as you may have heard during the keynote, we really cover every aspect of the beauty need, uh, regardless of category, regardless also of um, um, price point. And so we have 38 brands within our portfolio and um, and therefore it allows us to really dial into every single consumer and what their particular beauty needs are. And it also allows me as the uh, chief digital marketing officer to have a, um, a lot of different plans that I can play with. Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, the keynote, the L'Oreal keynote that folks can obviously uh, watch. Um, that's a significant event for L'Oreal to be keynoting CES 2024. What does it mean uh, to you to have had that keynote here at CES? Um, it's actually a moment where we're really um, able to show off how much research, innovation, technology has been at the core of our company for 115 years. Very often, when we, you know, we are in this space that is, um, you know, about beauty, about makeup, and it's very fun. And I think that, um, you know, what is not very well known is how much um, innovation research actually goes into that. So we're really happy to show up at, at an event like CES yeah. and talk about how much of, of our DNA is really focused around innovation and how that's actually created a lot of impact in our consumers' lives through you know, unveiling of, the, of the, the various new products that we, including the newest um, hair dryer that we're bringing um, to the market that is um, re you know, innovating on something that hasn't really been touched for you know, since, since it was invented. Well, know. tell us more about that. Well, they, um, I'm personally very, very excited for that. It's an infrared technology that is replacing the heat coils um, that actually, one, consumes a lot of energy, yeah. and two, also creates a lot of damage. And yeah. as someone who um, needs a hair dryer in my life, uh, I um, can see firsthand, I've experienced firsthand, the damage that heat can bring. So it is something that I think truly has a, a lot of um, qualities in terms of energy savings, as well as really bringing a new technology to the market that helps um, you know, um, women, yeah. men, and, and anyone who uh, finds it used for hair, hair dryers to do it better. So what is the actual experience of using that? If I, if I put my hand in front of a, a regular hair dryer, I'm going to feel heat. Am I going to feel heat coming off of this infrared? Yeah. How does that work? It was still, um, I think, you, you know, obviously there's mm -hmm. no magic uh, here that so you know well, technology to, and magic yes. can be a little bit uh, overlapping here at CES. <laughs> yes, and I have to say that um, this is something that really needs to be tried um, mm -hmm. to, to really understand the difference um, uh, versus and when we talk about the experience of yeah. um, a hair dryer I think we all have something in mind and it's sure. very difficult to articulate into words how different mm -hmm. the experience of using um, of using an infrared technology can be so I really encourage everyone to, um, to, to test it out for themselves. Um, so you're mentioning that a lot of this, uh, the significance of being here at CES is to showcase all the innovation behind your products. Do you think that's important uh, for customers? Do, do customers get a kick out of that? So maybe they just buy a product and they use it and they, they feel like they look good because of it. Um, is that good for you as, uh, you know, as you're building this brand? For, cons for customers, for, for bringing more people into the fold to show the innovation behind the scenes a little bit? It's Innovation is incredibly important in the beauty category. Um, and again, if I think that uh, for anyone who listened to the keynote speech, you understand that the, the foundation of this company is actually the ultimate innovation, which is allowing women to change hair color for the first time, and that was 115 years ago. And since that moment, and if you can imagine how revolutionary that has been, um, you know, that since that moment, innovation and bringing out new patented formulas, new ingredients yeah. that allows us to achieve the different outcomes that we're looking for, whether it's skincare, whether it's makeup, um, is an incredibly important part of what drives growth in our category that also drives um, the excitement that consumers have for our category. Yeah. It's interesting because it relates to, I guess, like philosophical ideas around technology enabling choices in terms of one's identity or one's way that they choose to present themselves to the world. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we um, think about um, beauty in this way that sometimes is a little bit superficial. 
and what um, this, the CES conversation has allowed us to be able to really showcase is this idea that when we talk about beauty, it is, a, it is an act of identity formation, um, community belonging that has been, that is as, as, as core to human nature as, you know, as is the need to, to meet face to face and yeah. to gather. So when we think about um, what, this, what the, the need is for beauty products, this is something that allows us to be able to have a much more substantial conversation that goes beyond just the fun of um, yep. you know, blue metallic nails, which <laughs> is a thing. Those are also fun. Yes. Um, your title is Chief Digital and Marketing Officer. Um, why those two titles? Why is it important really to highlight digital right in the title there for you? Yeah, um, it's a great question because I think you know the 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 digital element um, of it. You know, the, I think a CMO is pretty well defined in terms of what the role is, um, and of course there is um, that part that is a very large part of what I'm responsible for and what uh, um, within L'Oreal USA. And on the digital front, I think there is a there is this um, this idea that that. Our marketing cycle is always our funnel is always being reinvented and it's being disrupted and there's new channels to consider and we need to think about and more and more and especially given um, everything that I've seen at CES this week that um, there's more and more of ourselves that what will be um, digitized that yeah. will be um, you know uh, virtual versions and I think this is something that we must pay attention to in terms of what our consumers are going to be looking for. So for you to, to kind of summarize that it's not just about you know all the digital aspects that go with maybe a more traditional uh, marketing uh, campaign and many of the things we're talking about here in the Safe Space studio but you're also getting into things like uh, VR, AR, kind of what has been called the metaverse kind of stuff all those different ways as we talked about how you present yourself how you use technology again it goes right back to that core idea how you use technology to change or present yourself in ways that you choose to be uh, to be seen. Exactly, and I think the, the reason why we make that distinction is to make sure that we're paying attention to what, yeah. is, what is new and what is, um, what is important, right, in terms of identity formation and how we choose to represent ourselves, regardless if it's in a real setting, in real life, or in a digital setting. Um, in a press release uh, I read about when you took this role, uh, it talked about leading the digital transformation of the company. Digital transformation, uh, a, a great buzzword. Obviously, there's a lot of real meaning behind that. Um, how's it going? What have you learned? What's, what's, what's coming up next? What does digital transformation mean in this context? Yeah, I think the key word there actually is around transformation. Um, and the reason why that, that's important is because we, we, we're very cognizant of the ways in which um, you know, our lives are constantly being disrupted by new technologies. And therefore, one of the key elements that I pay attention to is to make sure that, that we are um, a very talented marketing organization. Our people are, are some of the best in the world, especially you know, in, in our category. And my role is to make sure that, that all, our workforce is ready for what comes next. And they're ready to deploy the latest technologies in a way that is not about chasing the new shiny object or about you know, being part of a hype cycle, but it's really truly bringing value to our consumers' lives. So that's yeah. the piece that I, I, I am very, very um, attuned to, which is the readiness yeah. of our organization. Is that such an ongoing challenge to keep folks focused? As, you, as you're seeing all kinds of noise and influx around, like, if you're not doing X, you're already falling behind. It must be really challenging to stay focused in that environment. Absolutely. And, and this is why I think, again, I'm very, very fortunate to be part of this organization that has a true sense of purpose around what it is that we do and what we don't do. And our sen sense of purpose is really around developing the best beauty products that meets every single consumer's needs. And so when, when and I remind myself of that every day and I remind my teams of that every single day. And when that is our core mission, it's very easy to separate what are the things that we really need to pay attention to, what's hype and what's real. And that really helps me to help yeah. um, you know, our organization prioritize. Uh, do you have any uh, predictions about the future that other people might disagree with or find implausible, but from where you sit make a lot of sense? I, you know, uh, no one has a crystal ball, um, and I certainly don't proclaim that I do. I think the, um, for me, w regardless of what technologies are going to come in and out of our lives um, and how we think about, you know, our our virtual selves or real selves, I think the idea that we want to own how we present ourselves to the world will always be 
um, true. And so regardless of the setting, that is something that I think is part of human nature, as what we said. So, you know, I think we've, there's a lot of dis discussion around, okay, well, what happens when we have all this amazing technology where we never need to leave our rooms and where we can, you know, really build our virtual avatars to, um, to, to be something that is completely different than what we would imagine Maybe today. Maybe non-human, right? Maybe yeah. non-human. However, that is still, there's still an expression there of ours, yeah. our choice for what our identity means, that I think that there's a, um, an essential role that L'Oreal is always going to play. Well, Hanwen, L'Oreal, thank you so much for joining us here in the C-Space studio today. We really appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much, James. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation from CES 2024. That's our show for now, but there's always more tech to talk about. Hit that YouTube subscribe button, leave a comment, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartMedia, or wherever you're getting this show. And get more CES at ces.tech. That's C-E-S dot T-E-C-H. I'm James Kotecki, Talking Tech on CES Tech Talk.